who does a night of midnight show out of the uh, InfoWars radio studios and Prison TV studios. And he'll be in in the next hour and in the third hour tonight. This is a special transmission uh, where we're breaking down the deteriorating situation, not with what appears to be a hoax, the bird flu, slash swine flu, slash human flu. Uh, that is more and more appearing to be a hoax. When you have normal flus every year killing over 30 plus thousand people in the United States. And between 200 and half a million, depending on the year, it gyrates in the world. And then you have maybe a couple hundred deaths in Mexico, maybe one or two deaths in the United States. But both of those are Mexicans that came to the United States for treatment. And they're acting like our way of life is over. What is the real crisis? You're going to hear a lot of breaking news and key information here tonight. I decided at about 4.30 today, 5 o'clock, to do this emergency transmission because it just hit me that they're openly announcing that martial law is good all over radio, all over TV, all over print, getting everybody ready. They're announcing you'll go to jail for years, if you don't uh, take the force inoculation, you will be taken to a quarantine center where people that are sick, even if you're not sick, you're going to be made to take the shots. They are announcing it everywhere. And I'm going to read where they're announcing it. Because if we expose them and they're forced to back off of this, this precedent-setting move they're making, people will later say, oh, they never said that. We're going to go over it all tonight. Now, there is a small chance, I'd say 20% chance, that this is some type of super flu. It's... 98% chance now that it was uh, genetically engineered, according to all the virologists and doctors we've been talking to. Clearly engineered. Very low probability it isn't. But the question is, is it hyperdeadly? Sure, it spreads fast. Sure, it has a long incubation period and a shedding period. That's what makes it really bad for being spread. But spread like a common cold, I mean, it's not going to kill a bunch of people. It appears to have a very low mortality rate. So then why the fear-mongering? Because the United States markets and economy contracted at the greatest level in its history, worse than the Great Depression numbers right now. We have all those numbers. Because uh, Chrysler went under today, under federal control. They're about to do it to GM. Things are completely falling apart across the board. And they're trying to pass all this legislation. They didn't even approve the new head of the Department of Health and Human Services. I forgot to print an article on that. You give me a new, a new emergency swearing in of new Department of Health and Human Services head without the Senate even approving. Uh, you've got uh, Mexico already on the verge of collapse with the phony drug war because of drug prohibition. You've got Obama saying he wants to take some of our gun rights because of what's happening. We have a treaty to restrict the Second Amendment going on. We have them openly in the news announcing birth of the New World Order, world government, private bank of the world you pay your taxes to. They're trying to pass carbon taxes through the Congress right now. They're moving on every front with their New World Order agenda, and everybody was saying no. The fact that the torture news came out, that Obama said Nuremberg is out. If you're following orders, it's okay. We're going to protect Bush and the torture and the warrantless wiretapping. The left was waking up. And as they're imploding the economy, the world government's expanding, they come in and say, martial law. Now, is this a beta test? Is this acclamation? This may be it. Using the phony cover of the bird flu. We're going to go to break here in just a moment. And we're going to come back after the break. And we are going to break down the latest key info. Call everybody you know. Tell them to in right now.
We are back live here this evening. All right, let me go over why this is so important and why they are clearly educating and, and brainwashing everybody, uh, acclimating the public to accept martial law. You've seen all the military drills that have been going on, Army, Marine Corps showing up at warrantless checkpoints for drunk drivers, searching cars in Tennessee, California, uh, telling governors when governors say, you can't do that, it's illegal, they just ignore them and do it anyway. And we post the mainstream news articles at Infowars.com. And PrisonPlanet.com and all the drills for martial law and all the drills for forced inoculations and the clergy response teams for years being prepared for a flu pandemic, a swine flu pandemic or a smallpox pandemic and martial law and how to go to the camps and how to take the forced inoculations and the government's going to save you. You start adding it all together. I was really thinking about it. I've been thinking about this constantly. And it really hit me that, that you got Joe Biden saying, don't get on planes, don't get on subways, and Obama comes out and plays the good cop and says, well, it's not that bad. Mexico, over a few deaths, has, because they say it's actually seven, and then 150-something dying of, of uh, pneumonia, which die every day of stuff like that in Mexico City of 30-plus million people. So we have all of that uh, going on. We have all of that happening, and you have the economy imploding and all of this going on. They need a distraction. They need a diversion so they can pose as the saviors as usual to sell the public on all of this stuff they're doing. It's that simple. Now, I want to go over all of the news. Coming up in a moment, Fox News, martial law, if it's a pandemic, is what they're talking about, what they're saying and doing. Time Magazine, Newsweek, CBS, we've got them all on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. We should create like a section, I think, where they're, we put all the articles that they're talking about martial law. Just acclimating everyone, even if they don't move with open martial law. The, I told you a couple days ago when they said we were level four, that we were really level five under the United Nations control. And I gave you all the treaties and read the documents on air. Then... Yesterday I said we're really at level six, and we got the document that we were really at level six from the state of Texas. I've been covering that last night and today. Then we have Fox News and all these channels, the same talking point, saying the same thing over and over again. Fox News, martial law, if it is a pandemic. We're going to play that in a moment. Then there is DHS set guidelines for possible swine flu quarantines. I'm always talking about these executive orders that Glenn Beck says doesn't exist. Well, here's CBS News. Does that exist, Beck? Federal quarantine authority is limited to diseases listed in presidential executive orders. President Bush added novel forms of influenza with the potential to create pandemics in executive order 13375. But see, Beck would straw man point at when he's debunking and others, and popular mechanics did this, old executive orders that had been refiled under new numbers and say, oh, that's that, that's expired just a month ago when I did my FEMA camp special. I explained how they do straw men. Oh, but see, here's the reissued executive order, 13375. Anyone violating a quarantine order can be punished by a $250,000 fine and or one year in prison. And under the United Nations guidelines that Reuters brags uh, – the United States is under section 14.2, section 1.5, maybe point one legal issues. It says compulsory vaccination for everybody. They're not going to just take you to jail if you say no. They're going to forcibly inject you regardless. And I have mainstream purchase orders that I didn't even get to today on my own show where they're buying more incinerators. The federal government's put out bids for more mobile incinerators. Got all of that going on. And not just mobile incinerators, uh, but we also have the executive orders I've read over and over again where they talk about mass graves and incinerators. And that's in the Rocky Mountain News and everything else I've been quoting. So we've got that. And we have Biden saying stay off subways during swine flu pandemic, stay off planes. We, uh, in fact, played that clip several times today. We'll play that later as well. Let's get that Biden clip ready, please. So uh, you have that going on. Right now, let's go ahead and play the Fox News. Now, even if they don't go to full martial law, they've engaged it under level five and level six, and we are under level six. And I've been telling you that since yesterday, 
And now they're announcing today, yeah, we might go to level six. As the internal document from the state of Texas with the feds said, don't go to full martial law. They've engaged it under level five and level six. And we are under level six. And I've been telling you that since yesterday. And now they're announcing today, yeah, we might go to level six. As the internal document from the state of Texas with the feds said between, well, let me give you the exact time here. It says, I think, between 72 and 90-something hours. Let me find the exact exact area. Obama will uh, declare emergency sometime in the next 72 to 96 hours. This may not happen, but if it doesn't, I'll be surprised. When this happens, all public gatherings will be canceled for 10 days. Again, setting the precedent. And I've always predicted then it'll turn out only a few hundred die, and it's okay, but they did it for the best interest. And, oh, now the troops are on the streets, and they were there for the Super Bowl, and they were there for the Kentucky Derby, and they were there uh, for the Boston Marathon. Remember a couple of weeks ago, the Army was there running checkpoints. And, you know, they're just here now, and we this is the way of life. It's like after 9-11, we had to learn how to be strip searched and take our shoes off and do all this. It's all part of dog training uh, that is going on and happening. So let's go ahead, guys, on and roll that uh, Fox News piece. This is up on PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com. Uh, in the article, uh, you can uh, read it, titled, Martial Law if Pandemic Declared, which they're getting ready to basically do, it looks like right now. We hope they don't. This is all part of training the public and acclimating them. This is all normal. Here it is. The World Health Organization raised now the pandemic alert for swine flu to the second highest level, level five. Right now, Mexico has implemented quarantines and world leaders issuing travel warnings. But, of course, it could get worse. That's right. If it becomes a pandemic, you could lose some simple rights like going to the movies. Fox News legal analyst Peter Johnson Jr. joins us live here as well. Uh, Peter, last night when the President of the United States was talking, it sounded like in his uh, remarks he was talking about the possibility that parents should get ready to come up with a contingency plan in case your child's school closes. You're exactly right and and that's really been the first national mention of of that issue and and I think it's important that we don't scare people and I think an effort's been made here not to scare anyone but people in our government have to start thinking about how Mm -hmm. if this uh, actually becomes a pandemic, how it's going to affect our daily life and, and, and our rights. What is a quarantine? Who decides who goes into a quarantine? Right. What is isolation? Who decides who gets into isolation? If I want to get out of a quarantine and isolation, do I have the ability to go to a court and get out? Uh, will the government say to me, you must get a vaccination if one is developed? Right. If I don't get a vaccination, will I be quarantined? Oh, if I'm a health care provider, if I don't show up for work at a hospital, will I be jailed? Will I lose my we life? We thought it was simple. You know, no, it's not, gonna sick it's not, gonna it's, it's not simple. Um, and, and we as a society, the freest society in the world, have to think about the balancing between saving our lives if mm-hmm. this pandemic comes true and the loss of, of, of liberty and the loss of rights um, as Americans. I think as Americans, in order to stay alive, in order to preserve our way of life, people are willing uh, to give up and to make sacrifices. Sure. But at the same time, there needs to be an orderly discussion of, of what the rights are of the American people um, when this uh, happens. Sure. And, and there's a lot of modeling that says it, do- it doesn't happen at all. Okay, so let's look at some of the examples. Sure. We're talking about closing schools, which I'm sure people would understand. Closing the border to Mexico. Stop us from gathering in public spaces. We mentioned movie theaters. Uh, off there goes the top. freedom to I assemble. Mean, I, I can think of a lot of other things like church, um, other maybe going to the mall. Well, what about, what about legislatures? What about the U.S. Yeah. Congress? What about uh, uh, courts of law? What about not impaneling juries because we don't want to have public uh, yeah. assemblies? I, I spoke to about an hour last night to Dr. Mark Siegel, mm-hmm. who's an expert on, on, on the flu, and he's written a book on it. In fact, he's a... He was on uh, our show about it. Yeah, he's a, he's a contributor here at, at Fox News. And he pointed out to me, he said, listen, we can't be panicking at this time. Um, we have examples, uh, you know, when you go back to the 1918 flu, sure. and there was a second wave. Well, the problem about the 18, uh, 1918 flu was that uh, doctors thought it was a bacteria. Right. We didn't know it was a virus. Sure. We have the capacity now to create 
uh, uh, potentially a vaccine for the fall that contains this strain of virus. That's exactly and right. so that's a big, big difference. But at the same time, we need to be thinking about how the legal landscape is going to be changing. Uh, our governors have to be looking right. at this. Our president has to be looking oh, at this. Man. Our state legislature has to be looking at this. And this is the time for the ACLU to act, <laughs> not to uh, uh, detain yeah. Americans as war criminals, but to ensure that all Americans' rights are preserved. Excellent point. Very interesting Peter point. Johnson, I hadn't thought about all that stuff. Thanks, Peter. Unfortunately. Uh, plus a uh, possibility of martial law, but that's a whole nother conversation. Down Meanwhile, the road, not going there. It's coming out this month. Novavax uh, that clones viruses and supposedly can make a vaccine in a month instead of uh, the six months it takes to grow it and go through all the rigmarole. Uh, they have been working with uh, European uh, virus suppliers and the UN and others to, to get viruses very similar to this that have been de tested and designed in labs because they foresaw this problem coming, and they say they're already in trials. I have their press release. They're already in trials for a vaccine they say could be out any time, just in uh, days. Well, isn't that magical that they're there to help us? And you have the antiviral drugs like Tamiflu, which they admit don't even help you. And we've got an Army document that Rob Dew was showing me today, and I was reading it, and I never got to it. I need to get to where the Army's saying that this Tamiflu doesn't even protect our people. It's bunk. You know, internal military document that's huge news i know rob's at work i can't i don't know where it is he's got it right did you call him about that he has it or no one i can't hear you through the window it, look it's fine forget it just forget it you know there's you know there's too much going on here folks i'm going to recap the top news and get everybody ready for martial law for something that's killed one person in the u.s when regular flu kills 30 for something thousand i mean this is absolute total bull this is the cover for imploding the economy as they're doing now. Oh, without fair confrontation, all the consequences. Okay, uh, in the next segment, I'm going to give out the toll free number for people in Mexico. They say it's a ghost town in most of the towns and cities. I've seen footage of Mexico City just dead, shutting down most of the shops, the restaurants, the government shutting down. And again, you have 150 something people that have died, and now they're saying, no, we tested them. Uh, it is pneumonia. Remember, Mexico City's 30 plus million people. They have hundreds and hundreds a day from tuberculosis, hundreds and hundreds a day year round from pneumonia. It has some of the worst respiratory problems in the world in Mexico City because it's so toxic and there's so much stuff in the air. Now, this has been going on for a month down there, started up in mid uh, March when the government discovered it. Why the hype? Why the fear? I mean, even if it's killing thousands. That's less than what die in Mexico and the U.S. every year. And I, and I keep repeating that. Why then all of this fear-mongering? Why is all of this going on? And the media and Obama's minions and his surrogates come out and scare you, and then Obama, no, 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 I disagree with that, everything's fine. And then meanwhile, under the uh, U.S. law, the U.N. law, is in control. U.S. under U.N. law in health emergency. That is in the U.N. documents, but World Daily has an excellent article with links to uh, all of the proof. Uh, here's another report. CDC, Tamiflu ineffective this flu season. Uh, this is uh, a story from Fox News, of all places. We have a secret Army document saying the same thing. Government health officials said Friday that a a leading flu medicine, Tamiflu, might not work against all cases of flu this year. The most common flu bug right now is overwhelmingly resistant to Tamiflu, they say. But don't worry, they've got a vaccine. You heard that report. Don't worry, they're going to have vaccines for you, whereas it'll at least be months, unless somebody knew this was coming and already had it ready and is cheating, till they have this flu vaccine, and by then this flu would have already gone past. And remember, they did the same thing back in the 1970s. That cue up that, it's important enough to play it after the break, just one of the fear-mongering ads they're running back in the 70s saying you better take your flu shot for the swine flu. And then that killed people in mass, and they had to suspend the injections. But they're back. They always want to get things in our body. And remember, governments worldwide have been caught over and over and over and over again carrying out biological, chemical, radiological tests on the public that is lethal to carry out eugenics in their own documents like State Department Memorandum 200. Now... Here is the big issue. 
I think, I have to tell you guys before the show to do this, but I got here late and I apologize. Give me the White House phone number. I haven't done this since um, two months before 9-11, and we see what did, good, good that did, but I did say, at least we tried, the last act of defiance. My uncle used to have this T-shirt of a mouse with his back turned. You know, He's looking up, and he's going like that, and here comes a hawk down to grab him, and it's you know the last act of defiance. He's going like that. Uh, so, you know, act of defiance. My uncle used to have this T-shirt of a mouse with his back turned. You know, he's looking up and he's going like that, and here comes a hawk down to grab him, and it's you know the last act of defiance. He's going like that. Uh, so, you know, flipping him the bird. And so we're at least trying here. And, and, and getting the word out about this, we'll neutralize their program. We'll stop them. That's why we're being hacked, why we're being attacked. The non service attacks very sophisticated because uh, the establishment does not like what we're doing right now. Now, clearly, clearly, this is being done as a smoke screen to unify the public around the government as the economy collapses so that everybody's primed with a beta test. And I was saying this Saturday for martial law, so that they need to, they can release another flu. Everybody's primed to bring martial law in during a complete and total Mad Max-type collapse of the economy because the people are going to take the government back and say, the, arrest the bankers. We know they stole $12.8 trillion. We know they engineered this on purpose. That's all documented. So they've got to have this flu thing to be a distraction so they have an excuse so folks are just feeling for their lives to come out and take our liberties and make sure this criminal takeover succeeds. Meanwhile, there's a Democratic congressman. Uh, this story uh, is uh, from Salon. Democrat says the bankers own the U.S. Congress and own America. Well, well that's true. That, that's who runs America is the bankers. And they've totally bankrupted and taken uh, this nation over. Yeah, there it is. Top Senate Democrat bankers own the U.S. and Congress. I mean, this is... Amazing. It's what I've already been telling you. They'll probably be decrying him or he'll die in a plane crash or they'll catch him with a hooker or something the next few days or he'll slip in on a banana peel and you know, bust his head open and die. But uh, that's what's going on. Uh, now they kill congressmen all the time. He better watch himself. Ron Paul said on the show last week that he's afraid they'll come after him for his in the Fed. you got to build up in the Fed, get more and more sponsors, and 87 sponsors now or more it was 87 a couple of days ago, it was 86 last week, to audit the Fed, to audit the private owners of the country. I mean, you got Greenspan on Lair News Hour saying, I'm above the law. Nobody can even look at what we do. No agency of government, nobody. He's worse than Nick Cheney claiming he's above the law. Now, here's the big issue. We've got to say no to them trying to push this martial law. We've got to point out how this is a hoax and how this is ridiculous and how they're criminals and how they're using this for control. We got to do it. I'll come back, give you the phone number. We're going to have Burmis in here with a report, normally his show, but he letting me send in tonight for this emergency transmission. Stay with us. Do you understand what's happening? All of it goes together, all the intel, the troop movements, the checkpoints, the end of posse commentatus, the drills, getting the police and military ready for swine flu outbreaks and martial law and all the FEMA drills coinciding for the last two weeks into the next two weeks around the country and the state police. Uh, in Arizona announcing last week that they were going to be federalized under the feds and just everything being federalized. And Obama saying, oh, because of the emergency, I'm not going to have the Senate uh, separation of powers. He Just like he said the oh, swearing in wrong and then did it privately and all of that. I mean, this is all done on purpose. They're just breaking all the conventions, breaking all uh, of the ways this country operates getting us acclimated to that, changing the color of the money. You know, all of this is psychology. This system is run by psychiatrists and psychologists, pitchmen, psych warfare experts. They admit that. You know, Edward Bernays, why do you? Why do women start smoking cigarettes? Because they had feminists march at the front of parades smoking cigarettes. Why do you eat bacon and eggs? Bernays brags, you know, because he put ads out, you got to have bacon with eggs. you got to have eggs with bacon. You know, basic things like that they programmed you and brag about, but it's everything else about what's manly, what's cool. And so let me just recap for those that just joined us, ladies and gentlemen. They are saying in CBS News what we've already told you, but I want you to hear it because when, when they start putting it out to the slaves, that means they're getting ready to do it. We're now under stage six. They're telling you, we told you that yesterday. Now they're saying, oh, we're about to go to stage six. But they're telling state health officials we have the documents that we're under that in nationwide. 
Federal quarantine authority is limited to diseases listed in presidential executive orders. President Bush added novel forms of influenza with the potential to create pandemics in Executive Order 13375, 13375, 13,375. Anyone violating the quarantine order can be punished by a $250,000 fine and one year prison term. I read to you out of the United Nations uh, Convention uh, that the United States is signatory to. That's why they've announced in mainstream news we're under UN control right now. They say in here they will use foreign forces. They've got troops from Latin America and 11 Latin American countries in drills in Florida right now. We played that last night. This is all about acclimation. Mexican troops in Katrina, acclimation. Dutch troops in Katrina, acclimation. Urban warfare drills. I went and videotaped in 99 with foreign troops trying to confiscate our guns. Acclamation, but all more intense, more frequent. Bringing America down isn't like bringing down some third world country. This was a free nation. They got to do it slowly. We're armed. They got to do it slowly. But they need to, at a certain point, there's a flashpoint. Uh, we also have Biden saying don't fly or get on uh, trains or subways or any area like a party or a house with other people. Uh, we've got um, this story. This is up on uh, Infowars.com right now. We found this yesterday and hadn't been posted, so I've got Aaron posting. We've had a lot of server problems. We got hacked. They went over the CDNs into the ports. Then they followed that. My guy stayed up all night doing a great job, uh, just uh, just an amazing uh, job uh, in here. Uh, Tim and uh, Matt, just don't want to uh, commend them both. Uh, at the uh, same time... Um, we, we're having trouble updating Infowars.com. That's why we've turned off all the comments on Infowars.com, because that's a lot of the data, extra load. And so we've turned those off for now, and the site's loading a little bit quicker, but we're still uh, having a uh, now service attacks and then just massive amounts of visits on top of that. Uh, but this uh, is, if you Google, NATO selects waste management technology from Canada's Echo Waste Solutions for mobile deployments. And uh, it says Eco Waste Solutions, a leader in environmentally responsible remote waste management solutions, has announced a presentation of a 4.5 million global contract with NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, in terms of the first time agreement with NATO Eco Waste Solutions will be designed to build four concentrated mobile incinerator packages for delivery over the next months. That's for NATO's expeditionary forces deployment uh, to, to deployable camps, and uh, it is for burning bodies basically. And it can be used for other measures. Now, in case you're doubting that, I was looking around because I had it in here just last night. My uh, mass graves folder from back when I did the FEMA expose a few weeks ago. Now, a lot of this we've already covered, but I'm integrating it all in together right now. Division of Cemeteries, New York State. You know, they had popular mechanics and Glenn Beck and all these people that we can trust come out and debunk us. Here's the about mass graves. Here's the Division of Cemeteries. You can go read this at Infowars.com. It's posted as PDFs. You can call the phone numbers on here. Uh, in the article titled, Plans for Mass Graves Confirmed Government Surveying Cemetery Readiness for Flu Outbreak. April 3rd, 2009, Jones Report. And, folks, I don't know the personnel. I have stuff like this stacking up in the inboxes and because we can't just post it. i got to make phone calls and go, hey, yeah, I was calling about, did you... Uh, are you complying with the report on FEMA number? Let me check my file. Who is this? Oh, just Alex Jones, a uh, radio host. Oh, they don't even, they're not even told to keep it secret. Yeah, we're building, we're getting ready for the flu to kill two million here in New York. You know, that's not really a New York accent. That's kind of uh, upstate New York. They kind of talk like us down here. But the point is, I guess all hillbillies do. In the city, you talk like this. Very official and polished. Oh, mm -hmm. Lovey, uh, Thurston Howell the third, the swine flu, I want a vaccine immediately. I'm sorry. Would you rather me talk like this? <laughs> Anyways, um, gotta, gotta have gallows humor, folks. But uh, you can read about the uh, mass uh, graves there. And then, and then you can read the Rocky Mountain News. State prepares for bioterrorism. Executive orders give government additional powers. Jim Erickson, Rocky Mountain News, one of the second biggest paper in Colorado. Executive order for bioterrorism attack or other outbreak. Mass incinerators, mass graves, seize antibiotics, cremate disease-ridden corpses under extreme circumstances. So, I mean, you know, mass graves are real. 
It's real. Yeah, click on those documents for them so they can see it. Click on that first one. Thank you. I mean, I mean, I am sick of the denial. I could go on for hours on each one of these points. I don't need CBS or Time Magazine or Fox News to tell me they're getting ready to engage martial law. That's what level five and level six are. Level five is martial law. Level six means they can line you up and shoot you. Level six means all laws are suspended, absolute dictatorship. You, you can read the U.N. documents. You can go just Google what does level six pandemic mean to laws. You can go read the, read it. I got it right here. But Glenn Beck and others, again, will say, I'm a patriot. I'm Glenn Beck. Uh, it doesn't exist and have popular mechanics on. So I'm just going to give you mainstream media because that's all people seem to trust. And it's mainstream media telling you how good it is. Federal quarantine authority is limited to disease listed in Presidential executive orders, President Bush had a novel forms of influence with the potential to create pandemics in executive order 13375. 13375, anyone violating quarantine orders by $250,000 fine and one year prison term. Now, you read this and what are they announcing on Fox? What are they announcing on CNN? What are they announcing in Time and Newsweek and hundreds of places? They're saying, well, for your safety, even if you don't have it, you must take the vaccine because then you can't spread it. You will. What's all over is Chrysler just went bankrupt today. GM's getting ready to do it. Everybody's losing their jobs. This is by design by the bankers, and they want to militarily capture this country because if they just bankrupt everything, people are going to take the government back. We're going to take the states back, and we're going to arrest the bankers. They're all a bunch of Madoffs. I mean, Madoff was up in the main crew of the Larry Summers. He was above him. He was the, 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 uh, Ken Lay set up the carbon taxes. I never even played those uh, C-SPAN clips. They're up on martial law. Com. They've engaged it under. JonesReport.com and TruthNews.us. People always wonder why I have those auxiliary sites. When InfoWars was getting hacked and a bunch of the other sites were getting hacked, we still had PrisonPlanet.tv, PrisonPlanet.com, and uh, ArnoldExposed.com, and the ObamaDeception.net. All the others were basically down the last two days off and on. So we are here, ladies and gentlemen. We are here. And... Um, you know, incinerators just all over the place. Best swine flea strategy, stay away, everyone. Little known social distancing plans could close schools, gathering spots. Slowly the spread of swine flea epidemic in the United States could well depend on how quickly communities can empty schools, close daycare centers, and shut down public gathering spots on a weathery ordinary. You know, if we ever tried to riot or ever tried to march on Washington, ever tried to, they would just release a bioweapon and say, you got to stay in your homes or you'll die. But they can only do that trick so many times, and that's why this is a process. They're beta testing what they're doing right now. We are beta testing waking the people up and how we're getting attacked and the different psyops they're running against us. This is what we are doing right now here together. Now, Burmas has got a bunch of news. He just keeps coming. In. I want to bring Jason Burmas. This is Jason Burmas. I want to say Jason Burmas has just done an unbelievably good job. You know, uh, we have all these AM and FM affiliates, and, the, and, and now it's going up to almost 80. But we always lose some as we gain some. We're actually gaining more than we're losing, uh, which is a rarity, you know, to actually be building. Because there's not a lot of stations that have the courage to pick us up. But as, we come, as, as our, everything we talk about comes true, you know, now we're on more stations. And, and those you get every three months. Some of the ratings come in on stations that subscribe to those. And one station, my, if it's a big station, say in Chicago or, you know, uh, Miami or places like that, you might have, you know, 40,000 listeners an hour on that station. And you add all those up together, you know, it's 315,000 last year, last time Ted saw, uh, from a big ad agency, an aggregate of my show, which was only some of the stations that had the book. Cause you got to subscribe to it to be able to use the numbers. Uh, so really it was about over 500,000 they estimated because some of the stations were little mom and pops and didn't subscribe to Arbitron. But, um, so, so AM and FM is just giant. I mean, KLBJ is the number one station from Waco to San Antonio or, you know, right to, uh, north of San Antonio. Uh, it goes all over the state. It's number one talk. Uh, and that sucker, you know, uh, when it's prime time can have 80 to 100,000 listeners. And when a big event happens like tornadoes, it'll be 200,000 listening. 300,000 listening. Okay, so I'm on you know, stations like that. Uh, but the issue is we use the Internet as a gauge, and we can see who's listening. And the cool part is it doesn't just geographically tie us down. we got listeners in Mexico City if something's happening. If something happens in Tokyo, we get listeners. Something in South Korea, we get callers. Uh, you know, the only place we don't get callers from in emails is North Korea. So we've got all of that going on. Russia, 
uh, you know, Germany, England, uh, the Netherlands. Uh, I've gotten calls from McMurtle Weather Station in Antarctica about it's a record cold winter down here, you know. And the guy sends me emails. You can see his address at the weather station down there. And it's, the ice is getting thicker. We're frozen in here. It's a lie about global warming. They're saying it's melting. It's not true, you know. But the issue is that's what's so great about the web audience is that it's spread out so far. We can get all these calls and info. But I just want to say something. Being able to have Burmeson, the few times he sat in for me, five or six times in the last year or so, he's one of the only people where the show web numbers didn't drop from, you know, 10,000 listening to 5,000 or 3,000. They would you know, only lose a few thousand. So he's really a great talk show host. I said, well, I need to get him down here to a show, really get him in the thick of things. He's a smart guy. He's already knew a lot. He's getting better and better at talk radio, being thrown in at pretty high-level talk radio, you know, uh, wet behind the ears, but he's not so wet behind the ears now. And I want to commend Jason, and it's good to be happy live 9 to midnight so when emergency stuff happens, we can really do it. There's a lot to cover, Jason. I want to take calls next hour, and I'm going to move over there to that chair and let you take over during the emergency broadcast. I'm willing to stay another 30 minutes the next hour taking calls. We need to take calls from Mexico to, to get more and more ground reports because this is why the PSYOP is so sophisticated. And I want you to cover the latest news with us. <clears throat> there are different things that could be happening. We have to put out all of the different options, all the different uh, scenarios that could be unfolding. <clears throat> now, first uh, is this. This is just a regular flu, uh, and they're hyping it up to sell a bunch of Tamiflu and get a police state going and grandstand and distract from all the bad uh, economic news and things that are happening to get their agenda through. But the evidence doesn't support that uh, because we have uh, all these doctors and scientists and others saying it started in the wrong hemisphere, wrong time of year. We never tracked anything even close to like this because it's, it, it's, like it's like genetics. There's histories of it. You know, a doctor on TV today when I was debating him on Iranian TV he was saying, well, it would take a decade to develop this, you know. Well, he was, I said, yeah, you made my point. The, you know, this thing has been, de there is no history of it. And, and he had to admit that. So, uh, so we can say, is it designer, but just something to scare people, designer so they'd have the vaccine ready because they designed it, uh, you know, hypothetically, and they're fear mongering to get control and power, and it's only going to kill a few people, but they're fear mongering, and, 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 and things look like that's the case. Or even worse, it is some deadly super flu that's designed to even go after healthy people, people with good sanitation. Uh, and uh, they are covering up as these state documents that they're feeding out to the administrators and state people that I have saying it's 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 going to kill a bunch of people. It's just as bad as Mexico. We're covering it up to not have a panic. And this is posted on PrisonPlanet.com and Infowars.com. Uh, then then they could I mean that could really be happening. But regardless, giving up your liberty and freedom isn't going to help you. And them saying we're going to forcibly inject you if you don't take it because you may get other people sick if they've taken the voodoo shot, the monkey pus and vomit. You know, if they've taken the bio weapon, Burmas then there's no reason that I should have to take the bio weapon. But they're now saying all over the news. CBS News, Fox, CNN, Time, Newsweek, everywhere, you're going to have to take the shot or go to jail, and then you actually read the documents, uh-uh. They're going to make you take the shot and then take your ass to jail. So, And those are what the FEMA camps are for, and they train the preachers and the clergy response teams. People still don't know this when I tell them, to prepare for a mass flu going back three years. This huge infrastructure, hundreds of billions built for this, and now it's happening as the New World Order is born, and they bring their police state in. The question for the listeners when we open the phones up and you is, how do we stop this? How do we explain this to people? How do we get the word out to them so that they say no to this? Well, I think you got to point out right away, you know, I think that clergy response team is very important because in that section of the WHO document that I'm calling, you know, the World Health Organization document, they say that they're going to uh, take privately owned buildings and use them for hospitals. And what better way to round up the panicked masses but to have them come to their local congregation, their local community center, if the hospitals are overfilled. Well, that's what they said. They said we're going to use the preachers because the public trust them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's how that ties into this. But think of the cold-blooded preparation. Government sells this idea they can't tie their shoelaces. That's when they're giving you crappy service. Yeah. But at the top, they can shoot cruise missiles down down chimneys. Yeah. Oh, believe me, you're preaching to the choir, but that's it. They always give this 
like Obama said, oh, we're way behind. Yeah, they're the just running the things. Yeah. They just run things. Yeah. They're just the most wicked people that get in control. They don't know how to do anything. Yeah, exactly. But Obama says, oh, we're just way behind on this whole pandemic situation. I don't know what we're going to do. Meanwhile, the U.S. spends more than the whole world on pandemics. That's really bioweapon program, they admit. Yeah, and we, I mean, again, Plum Island is right off the coast of New York City. You know that they're sitting there. Sitting but Burmas, in- we've been so close to this so long. I, it, it hit me this afternoon. I'm like sitting there playing with my kids when I got home at 5. I thought, my God, I'm not even responding to this like I should. They're openly talking about martial law, forced inoculation, and I've been so into this, so long exposing it, I'm kind of just going, oh, yeah. CBS covering that DHS 13375 document, that executive order, is very scary to me because I don't have $250,000 when I don't take the vaccine. But Burmas, that's just them in that executive order. The Glenn Beck said it didn't exist. Well, I know. It's even worse here. I mean, they literally say, you know, we'll quarantine and kill you. That's bottom line. And burn your body. No big deal. No biggie. And they got the incinerators ready. Yeah, no human rights, Alex. But, but Popular Mechanics says it. I mean, what are those little bastards in New York and Popular Mechanics going to do if they do release a bio weapon after this one as the head of Homeland Security promises and their families are dead? See, then you're not such a little smart ass yuppie anymore, are you, bastard? Americans, do you know where you're. Central Standard Time. I'm alive 11 to p.m. 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. And uh, again, we've been trying to navigate: Is this a bio attack? Is this just a regular flu? Is it manufactured? Why does the government tell the locals? And I've seen them where they've staged terror attacks and things, and and, and given higher level alerts. Like when would we be on an orange back with three or four years ago with Bush fear mongering, and later it got declassified that it was for political gain. They'd tell us we were yellow, the government would be orange. They'd tell us we were orange, they went to red. And they use it to freak the cops out and give them secret briefings and you're under federal control now. It's mind control. Oh, absolutely. And and, and so that's how I know their tricks. That's how when they went to four, I said, I bet we're at five, then I got documents. Then I said, oh, I bet we're at six, and I got documents and made calls. And now they're, oh, yeah, we're going to be going to six. They're under six now. So that means that's why you don't see any cops.